So we talked about electron configuration before. And I said that we were going to learn how to read it from the periodic table. And so basically we can use the periodic table to help us figure out the electron configuration of different elements. Um, instead of using the orbital diagram like we did before, uh, this time we're going to use the period number, the label of the orbital that we had, and then we're just going to count simply how many elements into that orbital we are. Um, there's a couple little twists to that that we'll see. Um, one of those is if you remember the f orbital should fit right here between 6 and 7, uh, period 6 and 7 on the periodic table. Um, so it should be inserted right there. Um, and so if you took this periodic table and sort of spread it out over the periodic ta uh, over the, your table, this is how it should look. And then we're also going to um, the D block and the F block. Those orbitals are actually much larger than the S and P orbital. And because they're so much larger, the period number that we see for those two orbitals is going to change. So we're still going to keep them lined up like we were. They're still going to be in the same order. Uh, the only difference is that the number, the period number, so like this 6, is going to be subtracted once we get to the d orbital. Uh, same thing for 4 through 5. So anytime we get to the d orbital, whatever this number is that we see, we just subtract 1. Uh, when we get to the f orbital, which is inserted right here, Whatever number we see, we subtract 2. So you'll see that in just a couple minutes. Uh, but electron configuration is basically the directions for how to get to an element. So the first example we're going to do is for sulfur. And sulfur is right here, number 16 on the periodic table. So uh, we're going to start at the very beginning with our first element, hydrogen. And first thing we're going to write is the period number. So this is the first period in parting my handwriting. Uh, we're going to write the block, so the area of the periodic table that we are, which is S. And then we're going to write how many elements we pass in the S block. So hydrogen is 1, and then over here helium is 2. And I'm going to write that as a little exponent. So 1S2. And I'm reading from left to right just like you would a book. So left to right. And then I get down here. My next period is 2. It's still the S block. And I'm going to pass two elements. So 2S2. Two two. I keep reading all the way across. Now I get to a new block. Anytime you get to a new block, you have to say the period number again. So now it is the 2P. And in the 2P, there are six elements. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my little exponent this time will be a six, 2P6. Now I'm at the third period, so three. This is the S block, and there are two elements, so three, S, two. And then I keep reading across, and that will take me to the 3P. So three. P, and then sulfur is the fourth element into that block, so sulfur is 3P4. So that's the electron configuration for sulfur. Um, you'll notice at the top of this periodic table that I have on the screen, uh, these numbers are not the group numbers. Uh, these numbers are actually, I just counted for you how many elements there are in that block. So go ahead and see if you can figure out the electron configuration for vanadium. Give it a try without using the orbital diagram. And when you're finished, if you will, uh, or if, until you finish, if you'll pause it and then click play when you're done. So for vanadium, oops, for vanadium, I'm just going to say it instead of writing it. Um, but first period the S block, you'll pass 2, so that's 1S2. Second period, S block, two, uh, two elements, so 2S2. Then you get over here to the 2P. 2P has six elements, so 2P6. Third period, S block, 
two elements, so that's 3s2. Then you'll get over here to the 3p, so 3p, and there are six elements, 3p6. Fourth period, s block, uh, and you're going to pass two, so 4s2, and then here comes the twist. I mentioned that the d block is off by one period number. So whatever number this says, when I get to D, I subtract 1. So instead of being 4D, it's going to be the 3D. So 3D and then vanadium is the third element. So 3D3 is what that would end in. So let's say instead of asking you to, to do vanadium, I asked you to do acetane down here. You're probably going to hate me because you have to go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and on and on and on and on until you get all the way down here to acetate. So that is where noble gas configuration comes into play. Uh, noble, noble gas configuration is basically a shorthand way to write electron configuration. Um, so imagine I ask you for directions from here to Walt Disney World in California. And you're trying to give me directions, and that's going to be a long list of directions. But if I know how to get from here to LA, uh, your directions are going to be much, much shorter. So you would only have to give me that little bit. And that's what noble gas configuration does. Uh, we're going to start with the noble gas before the element, and then we're just going to say what happens in that single line where the element appears. So it's much, much easier. So we just did vanadium. And this is what you should have gotten for vanadium's electron configuration. But now we're going to do its noble gas configuration. So for its noble gas configuration, first thing I need to do is identify the noble gas that happens before vanadium. So what I like to do is I like to follow the line all the way to the end, since noble gases are the ones in group 18, so the very last column. And then I'm looking for the one that happens before uh, right now, I'm hovered over the one that would happen after. So you need to go to the one that's before that or prior to that, uh, which in this case would be argon. So I'm going to have argon as my first noble gas, and the noble gas that you're going to is going to go in brackets. So uh, that's kind of how we say go to argon is what those brackets say. All I have to do now is say what happens after argon. So I just need to list what happens in this last little line right here. So I don't have to go through all the 1s and stuff like that. I'm just picking up where I left off. Uh, in this case, I left off at the fourth period. So 4, uh, it's the s block or s orbital. So 4s, and then I'm going to pass two elements in the 4s. So that's where that little 2 comes from. Anytime we're doing electron configuration or noble gas configuration, we're always going from left to right which means we're always going to start with S. It's just a matter of how many S's you have. So 4S2, uh, and then I get to D. So remember, D block is off by 1. Instead of being 4, that becomes 3D. And then vanadium is the third element in. So it's just a quicker, shorter way to get the same information that we had before. And your noble gas configuration would be argon, 4S2, 3D10. So our electron configuration was this big long list. And then essentially what I've done is I've replaced all of this stuff with my argon. So it gives me a much shorter noble gas configuration. So there's three up on your screen. Go ahead and give them a try, and then I'll share the answers with you. So for sulfur, noble gas before sulfur was neon. Uh, so we put that in brackets. In the same line as sulfur, we have three, that's the period, S is the block, and I'll pass two elements, so 3S2. And then I get all the way over to the P orbital. It's still the third period, P orbital, um, and sulfur is the fourth element, so that would be the noble gas configuration for sulfur. Calcium, noble gas before it, is argon. So uh, argon needs to go in brackets. And then calcium is in the fourth period. I'm going to go through the S block. And calcium is the second element in the 4S2. 
And then finally, yttrium. Uh, krypton is the noble gas before it, so that's going to go in parentheses. Uh, I'm picking up at the 5s, so 5s2. And then yttrium is the first element in the d orbital. The d orbital, you subtract 1 from the period. So instead of being 5, that is 4d, and yttrium is 1. Uh, quick little note here. Remember the f orbital fits right here between 6 and 7. So if I was doing this element below yttrium, in order to get to that element, I would have to go right here and I'd have to go through this whole f orbital, uh, which is off by 2 from the period number. Um, so this is just an example of that. So uh, tungsten W, the noble gas before it is xenon, Xe. So I'm picking up at 6s2. And then I have to go through the whole f orbital because it fits right here. So... Teachers, please pardon the interruption. Jada Jackson, please report to Ms. Turner's office. Jada Jackson, please report to Ms. Turner's office. So I have to go through this whole f orbital. So I'm going through this little spot right here. The f orbital is off by 2. So I'm taking 6 and I'm subtracting 2. That gives me 4. So 4f... Four and then the f orbital has 14 elements in it. Uh, so 14 would be my little exponent. And then I can pick up where I left off in the d orbital. So um, this is going to be uh, the d orbital. So I subtract 1. So that becomes 5. 5d. And then tungsten is the fourth element in the 5d. And that is noble gas configuration.